Yaney, and today I'd like to take a quick look at Newton's third law. Newton's third law tells us that if we apply a force in one direction, there's an equal force applied in the opposite direction by the object that we're pushing against. Uh, so it shouldn't be too hard to understand. If I have a scale, uh, for me to use the scale properly, I apply a force on one side, there has to be something that I'm pushing against on the opposite side. For example, if I put this down on the table, I push down on the scale, the, the table underneath it is actually pushing up against the bottom of the scale, and that's why I'm able to get a reading. If I push down harder, the table resists that and it pushes up harder. And so I still have an equal amount of force going down and an equal amount of force going up. Whatever force I apply against the object is then pushed back with the same amount in the opposite direction. Whether I use this type of scale, which is compressing, or whether I use a spring scale where I'm actually stretching a spring, it doesn't matter. If I hold one end, I can't get a reading unless I apply a force in the opposite direction. So if I pull on this side, pull up, I have to pull down on this side for me to be able to get a force. So that's Newton's third law. Uh, for every force, there's an equal amount of force applied in the opposite direction. Newton's third law also talks about action-reaction. Now sometimes Newton's third law can be obvious. Uh, the action and reaction of this balloon is fairly simple. I filled it with air, and if I were to release it, the air is going out in one direction, and the balloon goes in the opposite direction. Action and reaction. Sometimes the reaction's not so evident. For example, if I put a line in the floor here, and I want to jump, I actually had to push back against the earth, I'm trying to push the earth backwards for me to go forward. Now, even though I explain this to my students, sometimes they still don't quite believe that that's the case. So here's one more example that we can try, is if I take a skateboard and I put it on the floor. Now, if I try that same jump again, This time the results will be, you would expect to be quite different. I try and jump forward. And I can't because I'm not able to apply enough force backwards. Uh, I've had kids try this year after year after year and I simply can't get over this line. They say jump up and then go forward. Well, you can't do that. You can't go forward unless you can apply that force backwards. There's a lot of examples that we can use for Newton's third law. Uh, one of my favorites is simply to use a car, like this, a little motorized car, and turn it on. The car goes forward because the tires are applying a force backward. He talks about action and reaction. Well, we can see the car going forward, but what we don't see is that it's actually trying to push the desk backwards. So a simple way to see that is to take some pencils, spread them out on the table a little bit, and if you take a piece of cardboard and put it on top of that, it moves very nicely, uh, very easily. And so now if I put the car on top of this, I would then ask my students, what's going to happen? And some of them will tell me the car will go forward, some people will tell me the card cardboard would go backward, and some people will tell me the car will go forward, the card would cardboard would go backward, so we're going to see some of both. So I guess the easiest thing to do is turn it on. That is Newton's third law. For an object to go forward, there has to be something that's being pushed backwards. Uh, I can just hold on to it and see the same thing. In this case, it's pushing the cardboard back, and I'm massive enough to keep the car from going forward. So anyway, there's my first example of Newton's third law. Uh, stay tuned because I will be showing some other ones in some later series.